Hi, I'm Barb Gody, and I've been involved with the Santa Fe Botanical Garden for many years. And I want to tell you a few things about the very beginning years that it took to come to the point of actually having a botanical garden. We had no money. Uh, we just had dreams. <clears throat> so we started uh, with the Leonore Curtin Wetland Preserve. And <clears throat> we began communicating with elementary schools. We set up school tours. We had uh, developed uh, classes in the plant life, the animal life, and the water life of this wetland preserve. And in addition, we had gatherings for adults. We did field trips with adults in different areas of the Santa Fe uh, limits and had a wonderful response from the public. Uh, that was the beginning of r realizing that we would like to have a botanical garden. So eventually we found a qualified leader and we actually hired this person. And she began searching the Santa Fe area for a site for a botanical garden. Eventually, she noticed an open land uh, on the outskirts of downtown Santa Fe. And she asked the city what they were going to do with the land. Well, they didn't have any plans, so she said, can we have a botanic garden there? And eventually it came to be that they agreed a botanical garden would be a nice addition. And so began the plan, uh, finding a designer who could make uh, a specific detailed plan for one section of the land. 
and then also began the efforts to raise funds to actually start a botanical garden in the outskirts of, Muse of Santa Fe at Museum Hill. My name is Gary Smith and I am the landscape architect and planner and artist who was involved in the Santa Fe Botanical Garden. So I'm from the east, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm from the green landscape of Pennsylvania and Delaware. When she first took me to the site and um, walked over to where the garden was going to be, I had never seen a site like that before. I can't, I could not imagine it being a garden. And Linda always used to like to say that uh, my face turned gray when I looked at the place. I thought, how can you make a garden here? But we got good horticulturists involved who knew about local plants and their water requirements. And we got good uh, folks that knew about um, erosion control and how to capture water uh, to use in the garden. There is water in Santa Fe. Uh, and what we need to do is treat it with respect and use it as a resource uh, that is rare, but it's there. And we need to design places that hold water. And we also need to use plantings that um, fit into that water uh, situation. So in the orchard gardens, we have a, a catchment basin uh, that after a rain, the water is held there and some of it seeps into the earth, good, uh, and some of it runs off. Now, typically the runoff uh, in uh, a dry landscape just creates erosion and takes the soil away. But we, we brought in Craig Sponholtz, who's a real expert in making these water catchment um, structures. Uh, and they're based on uh, ancient Native American practices, Zuni bowls, these um, dishes of, of stones that a little dam uh, has the water run across and into the bowl, slows it down, and then it moves further down to the next Zuni bowl. What I love about this is it's not only um, keeping the water from scouring away the soil, it actually holds onto the soil. There's something about the turbulence that is created when the water goes over these little dams and into the bowl that it deposits soil. So we put a lot of these stone structures in and a lot of them have disappeared over time because they're doing their job. Uh, as these stone um, uh, uh, sort of weirs um, collect more and more soil, more plants grow the soil is then held in place by the roots of the plants and the soil covers up the stonework. So it's been fun over the years to watch that happen. I'm a horticulturist uh, and an artist. And so plants are the most important thing to me in a garden. And also uh, that the plants are used in a way that is really artistic, that we're bringing plants to people through the art of horticulture. Most landscape architects design a place, uh, they walk away from it, and they hope that the plants get taken care of and that they grow to what they had imagined they would be. In botanical gardens, that's not the problem. It always goes beyond what I imagine it would be. And that's certainly true with the Santa Fe Botanical Garden. You know, one of my favorite places in the, in the garden is the Godi Orchard Garden. Uh, and I loved working with Barb on this project. You know, Barb was an orchardist in Illinois a number of years ago uh, and then moved to Santa Fe and became a great supporter of the garden. The orchard garden is fantastic and the stone wall, the retaining wall that surrounds it on three sides is really a work of sculpture. And it was John Morris, uh, the local stonemason that I worked with whose artistry is all over the place in that garden. And that stone wall, the drama of that uh, retaining wall that surrounds the orchard garden, you know, that was taken from the escarpment 
uh, south of Santa Fe. That was the inspiration for that stonework, those rugged stones stepping down from one level to the next and using them not to imitate nature, but to be a, a real work of garden art. My initial uh, response when the, sh the, the um, mission shifted more toward displaying art, I was not happy. Uh, and you know, wh while I say that I'm, I always wanna go with the flow and let the narrative unfold, this was not designed to be a sculpture garden. Now, of course, this is an important thing in botanical gardens across the country right now. Mm -hmm. And I'm going in as an artist now and putting in works of art in gardens. So, you know, this is complicated, okay? Um, when we found out there was this old bridge available for us to use in the garden, we were very excited about it. We needed a pedestrian bridge that crossed the, the central Arroyo. We found out this bridge was available uh, from, where was it? Uh, in, uh, in, in Las Vegas, I think, in Santa Fe uh, or in New Mexico. And so the bridge was taken and cleaned up and brought to the garden. And, uh, you know, there's this whole national thing about um, preserving uh, and reusing old uh, highway bridges. You know, when the highway system was enlarged, uh, these bridges kind of got marooned or sort of orphaned uh, off uh, in the middle of ranches and all over the place as the bigger highways, you know, passed around them. So we had this bridge that we could use in the garden. And um, we visited the bridge uh, at the ranch where it was and we got very excited about it. And it was brought to the garden. Well, there was the question of what color to paint the bridge. And we had a lot of discussion about that. You know, I, it's important to me uh, that the places you visit in a garden, including all the built stuff, the benches, uh, things like the bridges fit into the landscape. So what color should we make the bridge? Well, I thought the first thing I thought was it should blend into the landscape. How about sage? or um, a, a tan color. Uh, uh, and, and then I thought, you know what? It can be the star of the show. Let, let's, how about bright red? And people were like, oh, I don't know, bright red. That's kind of like a big deal. And, uh, you know, and I said, hey, we're in Santa Fe. Uh, people love color. Uh, let's just go for it. And so everybody kind of took a deep breath and we painted it bright red. And obviously it was really the right thing to do. One of the things that happened at the opening of Ojos y Manos was, I get emotional about this. It was the best moment in my career. You know, after 30 years of designing botanical gardens, there's one moment that was the best one. And this was on the opening day of Ojos y Manos. And Tonita Gonzalez, who was the um, curandera that, that did the blessing of the garden. It was a whole day of festivities and she was wonderful. And there was one point where we were standing off to the side in Ojos y Manos and looking down on the bowl and all the stonework. And she looked at me and she said, you know, this is so beautiful. She says, it looked like you pulled away the earth and it was already there. Boy, um, we pulled away the earth and it was already there. Wow, you know, my, my goal has, is always to make a place that fits to the larger sense of place. And wow, I never have had any sort of greater um, affirmation of that idea. The story behind the mural is pretty exciting. Working with Molly Parsons, who was the education director at the time, we came up with the theme of the three sisters, you know, corn, beans, and squash. These crops are important in Native American agriculture and food from ancient times to today. I worked with a local tile artist, Alessandra Haynes, to make custom tiles for the mural. An important program of the garden involves growing food in Ojos y Manos and in the orchard and they contribute hundreds of pounds of food every year to the local food bank. This has got to be my favorite place in the garden. 
where you see these two mounds and then the representation of the mountains in the mural and then the mountains in the distance. Hi everyone. My name is Rick Herman. I'm the executive director of the Santa Fe Botanical Garden. And we're excited to share with you today uh, the next phase of our garden, phase three, the Pinion Juniper Woodland, which opens in June of 2021. Every visitor to the garden, as their eye scans the horizon, they see beautiful mountains and they see pinion juniper woodlands. The original vision of the woodlands was to bring that horizon to Museum Hill. And we think we've successfully done that. You can access the woodland at the back of Ojo Simanos, above the Berlin Amphitheater, through a gate that was especially designed and fabricated to transition you to the woodland. Behind the gate is where the magic begins. The trails are over one third of a mile, the first quarter of which is ADA compliant. And it ends at an area we call the gathering place. Very serene with beautiful views of the museums and of the mountains in the background. You continue for the remaining three quarters of the trail system on an improved surface and throughout the trails, you'll experience a number of benches. By now you understand that our garden is divided essentially in half by a major arroyo. Edge of the woodland is the western edge of that arroyo and Part of the overall woodland development will involve what we call the Arroyo Restoration. You've heard mention Craig Sponholtz, who does amazing rock work in these kinds of environments. Later this year, he will be engaged to come out and to stabilize the Arroyo, as well as to beautify the Arroyo. I want to close by inviting you to come to the garden. You are always welcome and we look forward to your visit. One thing the garden uh, does is showing how conservation can keep a garden going. Conserving water, how do we conserve? How do we save it? How do we use it to the development of plants. Uh, also, the soil, how do we develop the organisms in the soil that provide the necessary nutrients for plants to survive and thrive? And to uh, have such a wide array of plant materials uh, from ground covers to shrubs to trees uh, to realize, uh, uh, to help people realize what they can be successful in using in their own gardens here in Santa Fe, where we do have soil problems, we do have altitude problems, we do have lack of water problems, and yet we have a magnificent option to see an enormous variety of plants at our Santa Fe Botanical Garden, and we will have more options as the garden continues to develop different phases in the many years ahead. Uh, one of the uh, statistics uh, that has been a delight for me is to hear how many people uh, come to see the garden, how many people come from points, from distant points,
points as well as our own community. It means that to me that the garden has a place in everybody's life. And we have to make it possible for them when they're in the area to take time and see what Santa Fe can do with various variations of plant material. Maybe they hadn't thought of combining a certain bush and a certain ground cover. And here they will see many, many options, for example. But they'll get ideas. And then when they get back home, they'll think about their own garden and become more involved in making their own home site a place of joy and peace. 